Okay, so uh, I'm Josh Strasberg. Uh, I have the uh, joy of finishing this up talking about one of the most exciting topics of apophysitis. Now, so apophysitis, I'm going to talk all about, you know, who, what, where, when, why, how. Um, so first question is, what is an apophysis? Uh, Dr. Uh, Dean was kind enough to give us a good demonstration of it. Um, <clears throat> basically, you have a primary ossification center and you have a secondary ossification center. So in utero, you can see down over here in the femur, you have the primary ossification center, which is the shaft. And then at the ends of the bone, you have the secondary ossification centers. And you have articular ones and you have non-articular ones. Now, the articular ones are basically the joints or the epiphysis. The non-articular ones are things like the tibial tubercle or the calcaneus, which are areas for attachment of various tendons, such as the patella tendon and the Achilles tendon. So the next question is, what is apophysitis? Apophysitis is an overuse injury. Uh, it's due to repetitive traction uh, to the cartilage and the bone attachment. So you have the tendon, which is, keeps pulling on the bone, causing irritation at that growth plate. Um, now, it can occur at multiple areas. We see it in the upper extremity, primarily in the medial epicondyle, you see it much more often in the lower extremities just because there's a lot more repetitive stress in the lower extremities. So you can see it throughout the pelvis, you can see it in the patella or the tibial tubercle, or down in the calcaneus or the base of the fifth metatarsal. Now, apophysitis is very common. Uh, <clears throat> about one third of all school age children will visit their healthcare provider each year for some musculoskeletal uh, issue, and a large portion of those are due to overuse. We'll typically see these during periods of growth because the bones end up growing and the tendons and muscles end up getting pulled along and you end up getting this myoosseous disproportion. Now, the reason that we get the irritation at the apophysis is that in children, the apophysis is about two to five times weaker than the tendon or the bone. So when you have repetitive stress, most of it ends up getting absorbed in the apophysis rather than in the tendon or the bone. Now, how to diagnose. Uh, really, most of the diagnosis is based off of the history as well as the exam. Um, typically, the patients are gonna complain about pain, uh, plus or minus swelling, uh, localized to a very specific area, usually one of, obviously, the apophyses. Uh, the, on exam, you usually see that they'll have point tenderness at one of those apophyses, and generally, the pain is worse with activities. So I'm gonna start in the upper extremity. So we have little leaguer's elbow, which is a medial epicondylitis. Now, uh, little leaguer's elbow, the reason that you get this is that you have multiple muscles that attach to that medial epicondyle. You have the forearm flexor muscle match, which includes the wrist flexors and the forearm pronators. Uh, so if you end up having repetitive stress of those muscles, it ends up pulling on that medial epicondyle. The other thing is if you end up getting a valgus stress to the elbow, which ends up pulling on that medial epicondyle, you'll get stress there as well. So we see this often in throwing, golf, tennis, uh, on the forehand. Uh, we see it mostly, obviously, since it's little leader's elbow, in baseball players or softball players. Um, <clears throat> now, a lot of it is usually due to poor mechanics. So if they're trying to arm the ball rather than using their core and their legs to get their speed, um, if they have weak shoulders or wrists where they're really bearing most of the responsibility on the elbow, uh, you end up, again, getting that increased stress at the elbow. Uh, we see this very often in baseball players when they're moving up to the next field. So usually around 12 years of age, they'll move up to a larger field where suddenly they're responsible for throwing the ball a lot farther. Uh, pitchers are the most common patients to come in with uh, little leaguer's elbow, mostly because they're doing the most throwing uh, at the hardest velocity. Uh, now, some of the things that we see often leading to medial epicondylitis are patients who are having a high pitch count where nobody's really paying attention, they're throwing a lot more than they should. Uh, patients who play for multiple teams usually have a problem because while they may be coached and watch uh, their pitch count on one team, they're not necessarily being followed when they go to the other teams. Uh, patients who have an incentive to pitch harder where they're trying to throw as fast as possible and again, use their arm more, uh, tend to be at a higher risk. Also, patients who just don't rest. Uh, kids, you know, try to play 12 months out of the year, uh, but it's really recommended that they take some time off, especially in a sport like baseball, where they're really putting a lot of stress all in one localized area. Now, they'll usually complain about pain over the inner side of the elbow. They'll have tenderness at the medial epicondyle. They may get pain with resisted wrist flexion or form pronation. 
or pain with dog distress, all of which are things that you'll see in throwing. Usually since it is one-sided, I will get an x-ray just to rule out a fracture or some other potential pathology. Uh, most of the time, based on the history, you're gonna see that this is negative. Now, moving into the lower extremities, I'm gonna work my way down. You have a number of different apophyses in the pelvis that can end up getting irritated. And most typically, we'll see the iliac apophysitis, which we can see over here at A, the ASIS apophysitis, which we see over at B, or a less common, the ischial apophysitis, which you see down at E. Now, the reason that we have issues here is because you have a number of muscles that attach to those areas. So the iliac crest, you have the abdominal obliques as well as the iliotibial band and gluteal muscles. The ASIS, you have the sartorius and the tensor fascia or IT band. And then the ischium is the attachment for the hamstrings. Now, patients will typically complain of pain in the anterior or lateral hip with the ischial, uh, sorry, with the iliac or the ASIS apophysitis, whereas they'll complain of buttock pain when they're uh, having issues with the ischium. Generally, the pain is uh, pain uh, activity related. You may also see a very classic uh, limp, uh, this Trendelenburg gait, which uh, presents because of hip weakness. Again, since it's unilateral, I'll usually get x-rays of the pelvis to rule out any kind of trauma, such as uh, here we see the ASIS of, uh, avulsion on the left, and then you have the ischial avulsion on the right. Next, we go down to sending larsen johansson syndrome, just to make things easy for patients to say. This is technically a pelvic apophysitis. Uh, now, you get this because of repetitive stress on the patella. Now, you'll see this also with Osgood Schleier, similar to what was just discussed with the patellofemoral syndrome. Uh, you're putting a lot of stress on the extensor mechanism of the knee. In this case, it's being absorbed in the secondary ossification center at the inferior pole of the patella. You'll typically see this with patients who have tight quadriceps or hamstrings, and very often you'll see it during their growth spurts because, again, the bones grow and the muscles kind of get pulled along. Uh, very often they'll complain about swelling or tenderness at the inferior patella. Uh, once again, it's usually activity related. They will often complain of pain with kneeling or squatting or activities such as going up and down stairs or jumping. Uh, and once again, you will see tightness in the quads and the hamstrings. I don't typically get x-rays if it's bilateral, but if it is unilateral, I will get them just to rule out a fracture, as we see here on the left. A very classic finding for our cynic larsen johansson syndrome would be calcification at the inferior pole or slightly anterior uh, inferior pole of the patella. Probably the most common of the apophysitis is Osgood schlatter disease, which is an apophysis or apophysitis, sorry, of the tibial tubercle. It's one of the most common causes of anterior knee pain behind patellofemoral syndrome. Uh, the reason for this is that the quadriceps muscle attaches to the tibial tubercle via the patella tendon. So if you get repetitive stress on the tubercle, uh, you're going to end up getting pain there, again, very commonly during growth spurts. So they'll often have pain and tenderness at the tibial tubercle. They may even have some swelling or prominence there. The pain is generally activity-related uh, and is often irritated by kneeling and squatting. Again, I will typically get x-rays only if it is unilateral. Uh, I don't typically get it if it's bilateral. Uh, again, we're looking to rule out other symptoms. Here on the left, we'll see actually an avulsion fracture of the tibial tubercle, whereas on the right, the tibial tubercle is normal, but you'll see this calcification anterior to that. Now, one of the interesting things with Osgood slaughters is while most of the apophyses will resolve and not cause any long-term issues, Every so often you'll get a patient with Osgood Schlatter's where they get a prominence, and the prominence doesn't typically resolve. Most of the time this doesn't end up causing pain, but occasionally you'll actually get adults who will complain about pain right from that little ossicle that you see there. Uh, and on rare occasions, we sometimes will actually have to excise that to alleviate their pain. Coming on down to the foot, uh, one of the more common ones is Seaver's apophysitis or calcaneal apophysitis. Now, the reason we get this here is that this is the attachment of the Achilles. So when you're running or doing activities, you have the repetitive pull of the Achilles. You also have the heel striking the ground, so you have two stresses on there, uh, which end up causing discomfort. So they'll typically complain about heel pain that's activity-related. When it's more severe, they may actually try to avoid weight-bearing on the heel. Often they'll have tight muscles, uh, particularly the calves. And the classic finding is the squeeze test, where you actually squeeze the posterior aspect of the calcaneus, and usually they'll jump because that's exactly where their pain is. So once again, uh, for unilateral symptoms, I'll get x-rays, mostly to rule out something like a pathology, like a cyst, uh, which will occasionally be found. And 
Coming in to wrap it up, we have Islin disease, which is actually an apophysitis of the base of the fifth metatarsal, which you see here on these films. Uh, it is the attachment of the perineus brevis. Uh, the reason you tend to get this is if the calves are tight and they're putting a lot more stress on the perineus when it uh, is pulling, you also end up getting uh, stress on the forefoot, which causes more stress at that area. They'll typically complain of pain when they're running or jumping. Uh, they'll have pain at the base of the fifth metatarsal, and when it's severe, often we'll try to unweight the lateral foot. Uh, once again, just like Sievers, you'll tend to see tight calf muscles. Uh, in unilateral symptoms, I will once again get x-rays. So how do you get it to go away? In general, like we've also discussed before, uh, you're going to see this common thing with activity modification, ice and anti-inflammatories. With the media epicondyle, usually you're going to want to limit the throwing, uh, and you're going to want to work on strengthening up the core and the shoulders, so that way you can help to build up their strength and uh, change their mechanics a little bit. On rare occasions when the pain is severe, I, I will put them into a splint just to get them comfortable. When you get down to the pelvis and the knees, since the uh, quadriceps and the hamstrings are the major offenders, uh, as well as the gluteal muscles, uh, activity modification with ice and anti-inflammatories, as well as stretching and strengthening of the core and thigh muscles, uh, with the rarest of exceptions, will I ever uh, put somebody in a knee immobilizer if their Oshka slaughter isn't severe enough. And then finally, with the foot and ankle, uh, the main thing that we're working on is stretching out the calves. Uh, with something like Seaver's disease, uh, very often putting cushions in the heels of their shoes uh, to provide some cushioning is helpful. And on rarest of occasions, more so with Islin than the Seaver's, I'm going to put them into a boot. Uh, but ultimately, with all these things, uh, since we are talking about uh, strengthening and conditioning, physical therapy is a huge part of this. One thing to re realize, though, is as much as the, we talk about them going away when the Fices close, Unfortunately, they will come back and bite you somewhere else. So while you may have Osgood slaughters when you're 13, you will very likely go on to patellofemoral syndrome when you're 19 or 20. So you gotta take care of them. <laughs>